Hi everybody, it's Chuck Gilmore with Power to Sing Live, number 176. This is getting to be a habit. <laughs> 176 times. I always have something to say about that. It's just hard to believe that I've done that many live shows. But uh, this is the time every week at the top of the hour, and I am very excited to be able to say hello to you. Um, let me close that back up. I hope you're having a great uh, spring and or, depending on where you're at, uh, fall. <laughs> um, I... Uh, I have an interesting topic today, and I received this message from one of my students. And she said to me, uh, I'll read it to you. Is it possible that in spite of practicing, I might not master bridging in my lifetime again? How does one unlearn it in the first place? So. It's a, this is such an interesting question, and it's one that maybe all of us have had at, at some point. Some point along our progress, maybe all of us have asked, is it possible? How is it possible to unlearn the bad things that I've been doing all my life in singing? And, uh, and then be able to create new and productive ways of, or learn new and productive ways of singing so that I don't keep doing the wrong things all of my life. And, um, and so how do you break bad habits in singing? It's, it's an interesting question. So is it possible? I'll ask you this question right from the Get, get go. Is it possible? Do you believe it is possible to break um, bad habits in singing? And, um, and, and if so, how does one do it? So what do you think? Is it possible to break bad habits in singing? Yes or no? Angela, hi. Great to see you today. And Ariel, hello, Ariel. Uh, uh, Zena, hi, nice to have you here today. So this is a very uh, distinguished group. Thank you for joining me. What do you think? Is it possible to break bad habits in singing? We're going to talk about that because I think this, hey, Brandon, nice to have you here. So this is a, this is a, uh, you know, this is a very heartfelt question because I have had, I, I'm particularly thinking of one student especially that I had that gave up. He gave up. And I still feel sad about it. I don't think, he, I mean, I think he could re-engage, but he just couldn't accept that the direction we were heading was going to make a difference for his voice. And, um, and so that's a, that's a really hard thing to do. To, and, and here's a story I'll tell you. When I was in high school, I studied voice with a, uh, you know, a, a singer who had, she had her master's degree in vocal performance from a university in the Midwest of the United States. She had, she had recorded an album and she was well-known singer and, uh, and teacher in, the, in my community. Uh, the album was an opera or uh, it was classical, operatic, uh, you know, uh, different arias and, and different uh, songs from operas and um, pretty much the classical genre. When I was ready to go to college, and I think I'd probably had a couple years with her, of study with her. When I was ready to go to college, she said, don't let them destroy your voice. Don't let them destroy your voice. And it was kind of like, oh my gosh. You know, I hadn't, I was like frightened when I, when I, <laughs> on my way to, to, to the university. I was, 
I thought that if I, you know, no matter who was, you know, no matter who my teacher was going to be, I risked the possibility of my voice being destroyed by that teacher because that's what she said to me. And so what do you think that does for a new student and a new teacher relationship? You can guess what it does. There's a tremendous amount of resistance that's, that's built up in our minds. I went to school thinking that, um, that you know, I couldn't trust my teacher. I couldn't trust the teachers that I had, uh, that, you know, that I would be getting in, at the university. And, you know, I, so things like that happen in our, in our minds. So there are reasons for, there are reasons why it's hard to break bad habits. And we're going to talk some more about these in a second. Uh, what do you think, you guys? Is it possible to uh, break bad habits in singing? Um, Angela said, I believe it is possible. Uh, Brandon, hey, Brandon, nice to have you here. I think it's possible. Zena says, by working hard and concentration. Okay, so here's the thing, uh, Zena. Z uh, Zizo Zach. If you are working hard, but you're doing the exercises wrong, or if you're working hard and concentrating, but you're concentrating on the wrong exercise, what's going to happen? You know, so there's more to it than just working hard and concentrating. Many of us come to this place in our life, in our lives where we have been working hard. We worked, we put out tremendous amounts of effort and energy for years and something still didn't click. I'll, you know, I, ladies and gentlemen, I have a bit of a, I have, <laughs> I have a couple <laughs> soapbox issues <laughs> that I have to be careful with. I'll tell you, I'll tell you a story. And this was shared to me several times uh, in, a, in a group setting with other teachers. But I heard uh, Seth, Seth Riggs talk about this several times. When he got to Los Angeles from New York, he had been in New York teaching. He'd been in New York singing at the uh, New York Opera for three years. And he was on Broadway for several of those years also. And he was teaching. Then he got to, to LA and was establishing his teaching uh, practice, his studio. And uh, he had an opportunity to teach at one of the city colleges, which he did. And in the first semester, after the first semester of teaching, if I remember the number right, it was about 17 students from other associate teachers, other professor or associate professor teachers quit at the semester, quit their teacher to enroll with Seth Riggs. Why? Because his students were getting from chest into head voice without cracks, breaks, straining, um, with, with the significant uh, quality in their voice. And you would think that what would happen in a situation like that is that the, the teachers would get together and say, you know, we've got, there's something going on. Seth has got uh, something going here that we need to learn about. He was fired. He was fired. There's some territorialism in this industry. I don't understand, you know, it's, it's different. It's different than, um, I think, it's different than learning to play the piano or, or learning to play the guitar or uh, learning another instrument. I, there's something, some, for some reason, something very, very territorial that my teacher would say, be careful, don't let them destroy your voice. Or when another teacher is able to get something done in a student's voice, not just one student, but 17 students, 
rather than saying, we need to learn from you, they fire him. I think that these kinds of events really cause problems with, um, <laughs> with this process of breaking old habits in singing that just aren't working and didn't work and never have worked for years. So anyway, let me just take a couple of um, comments here. I just want to, uh, Angela, I'm doing well. Thank you. It's so good to see you. And uh, Ariel said a few days ago, live stream, I mentioned something like this. Okay, good. Thank you, Ariel. Uh, things are okay with me. Thank you. And um, okay. And we're, we're, uh, Angela is reporting rain where she's located. Today we've got, we had rain yesterday. We've got some sunshine today. It's forecasted tonight or uh, Wednesday night, Thursday, we're going to have rain and snow. Welcome to springtime in the Rockies. So, um, all right. So it's as much as I wish it were true, hard work and concentration, which is is positive and a good and a good thing to apply in our learning if we're if we're doing let's say we have the right exercise let's say we have the right technique but if we're doing those somewhat wrong then we're we're, we're not going to derive the benefit from them that we would if they were right or if we were doing them right or let's say that you tend to pull your chest voice or you tend to sing uh, or, um, sing with a high larynx and the exercises you were doing were just reinforcing those bad habits no matter how hard you concentrated no matter how hard you worked if you're doing exercises that reinforce the bad habits then your progress is going to stalemate. It's going to, it's, it's going to probably cause you to give up. So we have to have, there, have to, there has to be some se several things present in order for us to break the ha bad habits that we come to. Let me say a couple, uh, say hi to a couple others here. Um, okay, let me see here. Uh, good. You guys are having some conversations here. Um, okay. Angela says, teachers need to be careful what they say to their students. I lost the joy of performing when I went to college. Angela, that almost, you know, that, that hurts my heart. I understand what you're saying. Um, I didn't necessarily lose the joy of performing but I lost my confidence in my voice, that's for sure. And um, it, wasn't the, it wasn't the university's fault. I, I just uh, didn't, get the, uh, <laughs> didn't get the information I needed at that time. So Angela, yes, I, I, got, I was on my soapbox and uh, yeah, he was fired. Um, so music, Performance is competitive for sure. You know, you, when you all the you know you go to your university and it's a big university and there are a lot of people coming from all over the world, and so everybody that's coming to the university and are like in that department, let's just say whatever it is, and you're interested in being that person, uh, like that you were in high school, like you were the uh, Sterling Scholar in math. Well. You get to your university and you're surrounded by Sterling scholars <laughs> that were Sterling scholars in math from their high school. In in music, I got I I had a lot of opportunity to to perform and to be and so I I was a recognized leader in my or, in my choir organization, my madrigal organization, and musical theater. And I got to the university and I'm surrounded by people who do what I who do who do better what I, than I was doing vocally and uh, were even more prepared and even better than, you know, 
So you get surrounded, you get swallowed up in these situations. I'm getting off topic here, but so, um, all right. So Miss, hi, Mr. Rob zero one. Well, bad habits, uh, muscle memory has a part to play and it takes a long time to rectify. And yes, teachers can be very uh, precious about uh, their students. Yeah, I think so. Hey, Stephen, nice to have you here. Um, so let's talk about muscle memory for a second. You don't think of singing as muscle memory, but it is. And we, we, we default to a certain thing. We get comfortable with it. We've learned to sing a high note a certain way, or we've, we've learned to kind of condition. Our, we, we feel like if I just add this one thing to my voice or subtract something from my voice, it's going to be better. I heard this singer, so I'm going to try and sound like them. And, you know, so we, we can sometimes get to a point where we want to sing, but we got so much baggage <laughs> that it's hard to unravel all that. But it is muscle memory. And um, if, if any of you have ever tried to change something in, I, I always re revert back to this story. <clears throat> Harold Abrams, one of the Olympic runners in what the 1921 Olympics or some, somewhere around there, is to, is, his story is told in the movie Chariots of Fire. One of my, probably my favorite movie. It's one I've seen more, uh, I haven't seen it for a long time now, but I've seen it you know, I don't know, half a dozen times. Maybe that's not a lot, but for me, it's a lot. I love the I love his story because he had never lost. And then Eric Little, the runner from Scotland, beat him. And he was devastated. In the movie, at least as represented this way, he was devastated by he'd never lost never lost a race. And Eric Little just pounded him. And uh and uh, his uh he had already approached a professional trainer to come and help him. He knew he needed some work. But uh, Sam Musabini, I think his name, was uh, there at the, at the race, saw the problem, and, and said to him uh, something to the effect of, uh, Mr. Little, I can uh, find you another two yards, or something to that effect. And meaning, I can help you win this. Well, you would think that a guy who'd never lost, a guy who had been running for all of his life, and now was at the university, uh, world-class, Olympic-class runner, um, would not need to start over again. But in the movie, it's really depicted, it's very, very clear that Sam Musabini takes his, his run, his uh, particular stride, his, everything about what he's doing apart, takes it apart and puts it back together, reassembles it. And he, you see him training for weeks and months and months in this new way of running and a new way of thinking about running and new pacing and new, uh, you know, everything, everything. And you think, well, gosh, that's, you know, shouldn't it be a lot simpler than that? I think it's singing is like this. We've been doing it. Most of us have been singing all of our lives. We sing in, when we're at home, we're little kids, we're singing in preschool and grade school and junior high school and high school. And, and you think, and I taught you talk all the time. So there's not that much difference between talking and singing. And yeah, so you think, why wouldn't this, <laughs> why couldn't we just like do it right? But we've got all this muscle memory. I'll share with you one of my, one of the, one of the a bit of baggage I had when I found this particular technique that Seth Riggs developed. Um, this, I went to one of his teachers after I had met him in a, or attended one of his workshops uh, when he came to my, my, our town here from Los Angeles. I went and sang uh, something for the teacher and I sang something from Les Miserables, Stars. And that back in 1997, it was still a pretty big thing. It still is, but I mean, it was really big still. And <clears throat> this would have been 96, actually, end of 96. And at the end of the song, he sings stars. He sings stars. And that's the last note and the last word. Well, from some previous experiences I'd had, not my teacher in high school, but from another, end of it, well, one of the persons I worked with in college, 
I did. The, I wanted to have a bigger sound, right? I was trying to get a bigger, more powerful, brighter sound, and so I said, <laughs> I, I tried this once in a, in a situation with my one of these teachers, and I said, star, <laughs> stars, <laughs> and he goes, yeah, like that, and I thought, well, that must be the secret, and so I, <laughs> I. And so when I sang, when I sang, I, I was in another song. When I came to this uh, teacher that was trained by Seth and was knew his technique, I, I said, "Star." She said, "Oh, wait, 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 wait! <laughs> Don't add anything to your voice. Just do it like you talk." And I and I thought, um, "Really? I mean, is it that that easy? That simple? That you know? That simple? That straightforward?" And uh, the answer is yes and no, but so I. The point is, I had this, I had this extra grab. It was a bit of a kernerdle, ha ha ha. But I wanted to have this big sound, and so I thought that was the way to do it. Anyway, the point is that I've also had other students who who uh, come in and we're talking normally, and and I say say A B C D, and they say A B C D, and I say now sing A B C. A B C D E F G, and I think, and I think, wait, you just said A B C, but when you start singing, you say A B C. So we do things to our voices that change the natural quality of our voice, and 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 it becomes a habit because we think it's it's made it stronger, like in my case, or it's made it smoother or better in in another case. Uh, or it's easier to get up high if I go breathy. And so we do all of these things, and um, it creates muscle memory. And, it, 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 and so it makes it difficult to, to change. All right, so let's talk about how to break bad habits in singing. I'm going to give you some practical advice here. It might seem simpler than, uh, than you think it, it should be, but I'm going to... Let me just say another other reasons why it's hard to change how we do things. It's hard to change how we sing. It's hard to break old muscle memory and create new muscle memory. Number one, we don't hear it. We, we, we don't detect that we're doing something wrong. Number two, we don't feel it. We don't detect in, in that habit of singing what it is that's you know, causing us to pull chest. We don't, we don't, we don't identify it. Partly because, or we don't, we don't hear that we're actually letting go. And so there's a little bit too much air coming through because this is how I've always sung. And, 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 you know, you know, so there are things that we just don't hear, we just don't feel, and we don't know that we don't know. Oh, there goes my stream again. We don't know that we can't feel it. It's just, that's the, f the fact of it is that it's blind to us. It's really blind to us. Now, here's number three. It's not blind to us per se, but we resist it. We resist the change because it just seems wrong to me. It just feels so foreign that I just can't accept it. Or it just feels like the way my old teacher used to do it. Or it just feels like the same exercises that I've done before. Or uh, emotionally. We, so that's a mental uh, resistance. Emotionally, we, we resist it because we don't like... We don't think we like the sound, or um, I don't want to sound like me, or I don't like the sound of my voice. So I want, you know, whatever it is, we resist it because we, we could never be happy with that or something. Uh, or this can't be right. This can't be right. Um, those are the kinds of resistances that build into us. And it's not just singing. It's a lot. This happens a lot in other things that we're trying to break our habits with. Um, and number four 
is, um, is the thing that I said when we started out. Someone said something to you once that makes you feel like you're in danger, like they're going to ruin your voice. That technique is going to ruin you, or that teacher is going to ruin your voice. And so, right or wrong, you go into uh, experience very, very cautious, very guarded. It's so hard to learn. It's so hard to see ourselves. It's so hard when that emotional re um, fear is rejecting or it's got such a protection around us. It's shielding us from learning. And so those are all reasons why. All right, so what do we do then? We, we, we kind of talked about why it's hard to, to create a new or to, to break old habits and, and create new muscle memory. Let's talk a little bit about what we can do. Number one is we have to approach things with an open mind. We have to take a risk. We have to allow this to be a, a true trial. A, a, and, uh, you know, we, we need to do due diligence. I'm not saying study with a, a teacher that you know has been uh, as an ex murderer. <laughs> I mean, <clears throat> it's, it was such a blanket statement that my teacher told me, They're, don't let them ruin your voice. Um, that's a, kind of a, you know, that's a real setup for a problem uh, with me. My prop, uh, the problem was me. So nobody, I didn't trust anybody, but I tried. I tried to trust people, and I did. I mean, I started trusting people. They didn't help me, but I trusted them. <laughs> but it took a while. So we need to approach with an open mind. And I will, I will let you know that in th 23 years, I've only talked, and I've talked to a lot of people. I've talked to a lot of teachers. I've talked to a lot of students, not just mine, but teach other teachers from around the world. And uh, they all have come with their stories. I'm just going to say about my technique that I teach, which is based on the teachings of Seth Riggs. Um, I've only met one person who said, oh, it ruined my voice. And now he, he was in a show with me. I thought he had a good voice. <laughs> he said, no, it ruined my voice. I got a sense from the conversation that it was a personality issue more than a technique issue. But that's one person that I've talked to in 23 years that actually said that. I've never met, and I've had other teachers say that, oh, it's inadequate, your technique doesn't work, blah, 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 blah. Um, but it's kind of like Seth said, you know, he said, well, I have I've had 120 Grammy winners come through my studio that I've taught. Uh, so where there's smoke, there's fire, meaning there must be something going right. <laughs> yeah, you can't teach uh, Michael Jackson, Barbara Streisand, Josh Groban, uh, Madonna, just Bette Midler, um, you know. Al Jarreau, um, just, you know, movie star after movie star, um, singer after singer, professional after professional, be hired by, you know, Quincy Jones. I mean, just, you know, you, you can't be, you can't be turning out and, and improving and helping maintain these top, top professionals, Grammy winners, if you're doing something wrong, if you're teaching wrong. Anyway, that's my soapbox again. Um, so you want to go in with some faith that what you're investing in and your time, your money, your energy, your effort is going to work. And I've been around long enough to know that it works. And I've seen and seen it and heard it and experienced it. Now, I'm not just talking, yeah, I am. I'm talking about what I do. I can't speak for another teacher. But this is how you, this is how I had to break bad habits. And I got to tell you, I mean, it's like 10 years into, it was like 2000 and, 
nine. And I, so I was out. It's about um, six, 70, 80, 99, 98. And I said, about 12 years after I was into this, my wife said to me, she said, yeah, I think to me it sounds like you've kind of like are adding like an accent or something in your singing, in your voice. And I was like, <laughs> you know, I, I, and I probably was. I started out in high school. Uh, I got the role of King Arthur, and I probably still had some little thing about an English accent. <laughs> it's hard to break habits. Anyway, approach what you're doing with an open mind and know that it, it works. I would like to say that to my students. I can't speak for other teachers. Number two, and here's a very practical thing. Record and listen to yourself. So uh, if you're, pre so let's say you take a lesson, and I recommend you take a lesson. I studied, I took lessons all the time. Um, <clears throat> I also listened to tapes for two and a half years. But uh, when when the teacher presented it's himself and the opportunity was right for me and I could do it, um, I started studying with another one of Seth's teachers. He was fantastic. I studied with him for eight years, and he helped me get a lot of auditions. And he's a, a, a great individual. Um, so I would rec I recorded I recorded my lesson, of course. I listened to my lesson, but it wasn't it wasn't till some years later. Um, after I finished studying with uh, with this gentleman, uh, probably three to four years later, three years later, I I had another. I was studying. I studied with another teacher, and um, and some some good things happened in my voice, and I went back to my my studio and I listened to the recording. I listened to the recording of my lesson, and I could hear something in it that I'd not, not heard before. And then I recorded myself singing along with my lesson. And then I listened to that recording of me singing with the lesson. So the one way to help break some habits is to listen to yourself do a lesson or listen to yourself sing along with a demonstration or, or something. If you think you're doing what you're supposed to do, record yourself with that, with the recording, and then listen and see if you are. I'll tell you a story. One time I was uh, taking a lesson from uh, a lady and a very, very fine teacher, also one of Seth Riggs' um, uh, protégés, and she said, I, I was doing, mom, 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 and we were going through this exercise, Ma 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 ma. She says mum. Ma 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 mum. She said ma 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 ma. She says mum mum. And I thought I'm saying mum. What do you want me to do? Well, guess what? After I got back and listened to my recording, I was saying ma'am. Well, it was not exactly ma'am, but it wasn't mum. Ma, 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 ma. I was going from O to A. I couldn't hear it. I couldn't feel it. But I wasn't doing what she said. So that's another reason why to listen to what you're doing. You think, I thought I was doing it one way and I was doing it another way. That is muscle memory. Not only just how I did it, but how I hear it. It's... And she, she also, same teacher also said, you tend to sing more open vowels than you think you're singing. And she's absolutely right. I got into in a couple of years, well, let me see, was it around the same, that was after I, had, I got in with, I did a lesson with Seth. And I had a brilliant lesson doing the exercises. I started singing the song and I pulled all the, I, op I spread all the vowels and I was teaching. I was a, I was a teacher at the time. This was early. In my teaching, this is almost uh, would have been two thousand and um, eleven. So, uh, what's that? Eight years ago.
or nine years ago. So I, you know, I, I splat vowels. Here's what says it. I don't know who's letting you do that. <laughs> so I've been there, you guys. I know what this is like. It's not easy because I, I wasn't hearing it. And then when I got into the song, it started like breaking down. It wasn't going well. I'd had this great first half lesson, first 30 minutes. I'm brilliant. I'm so excited. I'm doing such a good job for Seth. And then the second half, I just bombed it. <laughs> it's the best thing that ever happened to me, almost. It just was humbling. It helped me realize that I had some work to do. No, this wasn't in 2011. This would have been 2000 and... Um, Yes, it was. Sorry, in in January two thousand eleven, so it was later in the in the year uh, that summer when I had a breakthrough lesson with another one of Seth's fine teachers. So I I resolved that I was going to get that fixed. I was going to I was going to work on this so that I did not do that. So carefully, so listen, record yourself, listen to yourself, pr listen to yourself, practice, listen to your lesson. Listen to yourself practicing the lesson. And this is gonna this is gonna help create awareness in your voice. You'll become aware that you're you're you know, you'll you'll hear yourself either doing it right or you'll hear, hear yourself doing it wrong. And you've but you've gotta you've gotta be listening. You wanna listen to the direction you're getting. Compare what you're doing to the direction you're given. Listen to both things. And um, you, you'll start to develop greater awareness of what you do and what your voice does. So this is really important. Otherwise, how can you change, how can you break a bad habit if you're unaware of it? So I was told that I tend to spread my vowels. And that was really brought home to me. And not too long after, I had a lesson with, uh, when I took a lesson from Seth, and I splatted vowels all over the place. And he said, I don't know who's letting you do that. So we went through one word by word and corrected things. And that got better. And I do much better now. Okay. Yeah, and I mentioned this. Take a lesson. Take a lesson. Check it check it out. Now, members of Singers Impact, we're we're kind of pro we're programming the experience so that you you have opportunities for me to listen to your voice multiple times. But if you're not in Singer's Impact and you don't have access, you know, you, you want to find a uh, schedule lesson with me um, or somebody who knows teaching this same thing. Why? Because you, we want to know, we want to know if we're doing it right. I've shared this story before, but when I was on my own for two and a half years, the first thing I asked the teacher and when I started staying with him was, is that we were up doing long scales, and I got up into my head voice, and I said, what is that? He said, what is what's what? I said, is that head voice, or is that falsetto? It's head voice. Well, that made that really helped me. I thought I was in head voice, but it helped me realize that I was right, and the feeling was right, and I was progressing the right way. And so we, we want people to just, you know, have somebody check in, and, and or check in with a, a teacher, and and get get things, you know, even if it's just once in a while or once or twice, it just helps. Um, so you might be also be helped by taking notes or, or jotting down, uh, you know, start a, a voice journal. Uh, Angela is actually doing that right now. She's doing a voice journal. She's She's keeping track of her practice time and doing some reflection on it. Uh, that is developing awareness, and so we can do a lot. We can videotape yourself. You go to these golf clinics, and they're gonna you're going to learn how to be a great golfer. One of the first things they do, and most a lot of these clinics, is they rec they do a video of you of your golf swing and of you hitting a golf ball, and of you swinging the golf club, and then they match you. I hear I have never done this before, but I understand they match you up with. A swing of another professional. Oh, your swing is like Tiger Woods, or your swing is like this guy, or this guy, or this lady. Um, well, that way you're getting some feedback visually what you're doing. Record yourself on video. 
sing in front of the mirror. Record yourself singing in front of the mirror with audio or with audio and video. So just develop a greater awareness of what you're actually doing and how it's, and and here's what's gonna happen. You're gonna think you're doing it one way, you're gonna to listen to the recording and you're gonna realize you're not. So it starts, it's humbling. <laughs> but that's what we gotta do. Okay, so practice being aware. Um, keep some notes, keep some journal entries. Now, here's, here's pretty much a promise. You keep doing what you've always been doing, you're gonna pretty much be getting what you've always got. If you keep doing what you've always been doing, you're gonna get what you've always got. So you've got to risk, you know, take a chance. What's there to lose? You know, you're going to lose the bad way you've been doing things. And so you, you got to put yourself out there and you have to be willing to risk it. And, and it's, a, it's a great adventure, though. It's really fun. It's an exciting adventure, I think. I think it's a thrill. And uh, it's a thrill to get up on stage and try some things, you know, to, to start performing, start singing. You're going to get some feedback. It's going to help you create awareness. You're going to start getting into in tune to what you do well and what you don't do well. And, um, you know, it's, it's not, but it's not that you have, it's not that I had a bad voice. I just had some bad habits and probably still have some. And, um, my wife told me that I tend to like move one of my fingers when I, when I'm doing a solo or something. And one of my directors said to me at one time, she said, hey, Chuck, I really like, uh, oh, it was uh, my last roles last year. Um, Alfred P. Duleo in Ma Fire Light. Um, I, I, we were early in rehearsals and I was doing something. I wasn't singing, I was doing lines. And I kept, I kept moving my hand kind of funny like this. Well, that's a tick that I have. My wife called me on it once. By the way, if you have spouses or a close significant other, a lot of times they're, they'll be honest with you. Get some feedback. Have them listen to you. And have them listen to the recording you're trying to do and listen and have them listen to whether, you know, listen to the recording, listen to you and, and get some feedback. Is that, does it sound like I'm doing what that recording is saying? They'll tell you. Anyway, my spouse said, told me one time, she said, I noticed you're kind of move your hand a little bit when you're doing that. And, and my, I had a director said, Hey, I really like the way you did that. You look kind of nervous and uncomfortable. And that's, <laughs> and <laughs> I didn't tell her that was a nervous tick <laughs> for, you know, we were in rehearsal, but, uh, actually I think I got rid of that uh, with some stronger, uh, character choices. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so, that's the end of my spiel. Uh, tell me other ideas that you guys have to um, to to break bad habits in singing. I'd be really curious uh, what you what you would recommend. And again, I apologize about the stream. It's you know it's now it's back, so um, I might have to call my. I know my internet speed is is uh, awesome, but maybe it's the provider in between that's causing a fluctuation or something. I don't know. All right, so uh, Mr. Ro Rob Zero uh, looks as if all her signed off will need to watch recording. Be back soon. Okay, yeah. So uh, Angela, you said you're still here. Uh, Zena says, is he still recording? Yes, thanks you guys. If you're gone, that's all right. I'm going to, uh, as I mentioned, I'm gonna go ahead and I've recorded uh, from the, the first, right after the first problem. Uh, okay, Angela says, my husband's lips move when he's playing a difficult section on the guitar. <laughs> yeah, that's probably, you know, I mean, <laughs> you know, you have to decide if that's, if that's gonna hurt him or help him. Maybe it's gonna help him. That'll be his signature, you know, that people will say, hey, oh, there he goes. Now we know he's really into it because he's moving his lips. But um, there's some things that we can do that are counterproductive for sure. Um, 
How are you, how are you doing? Um, Michaela, nice to have you here today. So any, any other ideas, you guys, about how... Okay. Uh, and, Adrian, Adrian said, uh, I sometimes trick myself to break bad habits. What do you mean? Can you elaborate? That would, that's an interesting concept. Um, I think that's probably some real validity there. Um, what, are you, what are you thinking when you say you sometimes trick yourself? Singing in front of the mirror, Angela said, helps me see if my posture is good and if my vowels are long or, or spread out or not, and not spread out. Yeah, there's, it's, it's actually, again, that's a very humbling experience to sing in front of the mirror <laughs> and watch yourself. I tended to over enunciate sometimes when I was singing. I'd see pictures of me on stage and I would be like, oh, I was doing some crazy opening. You know, of course, that's not always accurate because the camera freezes us in weird situations. But yeah, so again, becoming self-aware is like watching yourself, listening to yourself. Um, okay, so Andrin has a, uh, so just a second. Michaela, great, thank you. Uh, okay, you guys are having a chat. Um, I need advice because I tense up too much when I have to hit high notes. I think I'm afraid to hit them. So Michaela, that's um, very, very common. And um, so I would recommend in the, in the description below this video, when this is all uploaded and everything, if you go to the description, scroll down a little ways in the description, and you'll find it says free PDF, get your vocal type. So you want to get your vocal type. It's and it, you'll take it, the PDF <coughs> contains links. It'll take you to the vocal test. Take the vocal test, get your vocal type, and then watch the videos about your vocal type, and then down, and then do the exercises for your vocal type. Uh, that's going to help you the fastest, the quickest, and the most focused way to help you with um, what you're describing here about having a hard time singing high notes. The larynx is coming up and probably chest voice is being pulled up and uh, it makes everything kind of squeeze off and tighten up. So get that PDF, um, get, my, get, get your vocal type or get my vocal type and do the exercises, watch the videos and do the exercises for your vocal type. Okay, so Andrew says, uh, I strain my voice sometimes and my larynx goes up. But when I do, sometimes a different task aside doing the okay. But when I do some sometimes a different task aside from doing the exercises don't really strain because my brain doesn't think of it. Great point. So another way of, of thinking about that is if this is say you're having a hard time with the exercise, do this. <laughs> Or sing the song. Um, and the rocket's red glare. So do bend down, look at the floor while you're you know you're doing the Star Spandle Banner, or you get the idea. When you have the high note, bend down, look at the floor, and and stand back up. It it, it throws your you know you, the, your brain sees the floor coming toward you, and you're going down, and so it takes the attitude of reach out of what you're doing. Um, the same thing can be done with if you just march back and forth in the room, uh, march, do a march while you're singing the song. Um, you, you stop, you start forgetting yourself and what you're concerned or worried about. And then all of a sudden, gosh, that was so much easier. What happened? Why was that so easy? <laughs> That's a good strategy, Andrew, and I think it's a, a really good idea. Uh, all right, this is, uh, I've been doing sometimes. Okay, so it's five minutes to the hour, you guys. Today, I do have a student that I have to call on Skype at the top of the hour. So I've got about f three and a half more minutes left, and then we have to uh, end today's session. Um, let me just make sure I'm covering all of the questions here. 
thanks you guys for chatting with each other. And uh, again, the <laughs> the internet has been a little bit frightening this last week. Um, okay. Angela, let me back up here. I see she says, it's hard for me to transfer from the exercises to songs. I'll record, 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 listen, listen, listen. Uh, Angela, join the club. It's, it's different. It's harder because there are all these different words. And we're doing the exercises on, a, on the same, same vowel. But it's different to say uh, one, two, three. Well, you, you get the idea. If I started putting in a lot of words, like the songs do, at different pitches and, and so forth, different vowels, different consonants coming at you, all of a sudden now it's harder. <laughs> and um, you'll get to that, Angela, inside Singer's Impact. Um, you'll get to a section that's called the Bridging Kit, and it's going to help you in your song application. Uh, and there's a little bit of that inside uh, Sing Higher Than Ever Before, uh, which you're working towards also. All right. Oh, uh, Oina. Hi, Oina. Nice to have you here. We're just wrapping up. Um, thank you, Angela. And uh, Veg Nubi. the link that you sent me worked for a little while. Then it timed out. I can't even access it anymore. No, that's the that's probably the um, singer's impact. Um, in the 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 other link that I was talking about below is not the link for singer's impact. Scroll down; it'll say get get the free PDF. That link is still live, and uh, you can get the uh, PDF, and then you can take the vocal test, watch the videos, and do the exercises for your vocal type. Download the exercises for your vocal type. Is it right that vibration goes back the head singing uh, the head singing the head voice? Yes, the vibrations will tend to go back and hit the soft palate of the voice. So if I said, oh, the when it's in chest, it tends to just hit the hard palate, and as it goes, if I'm doing it right, that that resonance goes back and then goes up and through uh, up uh, you know it it activates the sympath uh, the tissues and it gets some sympathetic vibration up into your head all right you guys I love you too thank you so much for being here and um, I will look forward to seeing you next time I'm Chuck Gilmore with power to sing live you can sing higher with beauty confidence and power See you inside the next video. Take care.